Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. I hope you're having a good week and a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Hugh, Keem, David, and Leo. Greatly appreciate your support. And just a quick update from yesterday to everybody that interacted with this post about Ashley being in the hospital. I just have to send my deepest gratitude to you. At different times of the day, it honestly brought Ashley and I a small tear in our eye just knowing how awesome this community is and when things happen to know that you're not alone. It's just a very comforting feeling. So yesterday, honestly, you guys, it was impactful, everybody that commented. And so for that, thank you guys very much. And I'll have a quick update on Ashley at the end of the video if you're interested. In the Marine Corps, we live by honor, courage, commitment. Have the honor to do the right thing all the time, even when someone's not watching. Don't skip a process, don't skip a step. Even though it might be a little quicker, do what you're supposed to do. Have the honor and courage to let us know when something's not working right, whether you produce a bad product or we can do something better, let us know. And commitment. Sometimes we gotta work a little longer, come a little earlier. We're all a family here. We want the team to be successful. The attributes that we have in the military directly trans over to making a successful team here at Tesla. And to all of you veterans out there, a very happy Veterans Day. I greatly appreciate all of your service. And sticking with that theme to kick it off today, GM Defense planning to produce a military vehicle based on the Hummer EV in 2022. This would be a step in commercializing GM's EV business, including a Hummer-based electric light reconnaissance vehicle, or ELRV, for potential use by the Army. GM Defense plans to use and modify components of the Hummer EV like the frame, the motor, and the Altium batteries. It will be designed with military specs though, so it's not going to look like the consumer Hummer EV. GM may be assembling ELRV prototypes next year, but this program is not a sure thing yet, as up to 10 companies, one being GM, bought EVs so that the Army could basically test these vehicles and their off-road capability and define the goals to help inform possible solutions. Then the military would select two companies to actually make these vehicles. A decision is currently expected by mid-decade. And just a quick note on Elon selling shares, take a closer look. These transactions were pursuant to a rule 10b5-1, that trading plan that yes, we discussed prior to Elon selling. This is a way for insiders to sell their stock in a company and it usually takes a few weeks to set up. And going back to the form, it says that this was put in place on September 14th. So basically over the last two months, this stock sale has been in the making exactly like we said. And the last quick thing here, a lot of people are saying Elon's done selling stock not so fast. He's really only sold between three and 5% when he said he would sell up to 10. So maybe he's done. Maybe we're going to get more form fours in the coming days. So not a big deal, but just keep it in the back of your mind. And I would love to dive into the numbers here further, but I do have to be back at the hospital as Ashley is still there. So Rob will probably cover it more in depth. If not, and it's still relevant in a few days, we'll get into it then. Next up, we got this video shared by Inside EVs of Goodyear basically testing some of their airless tires on a Model 3. So in case you're not familiar, Elon did have some comments relatively recently about these airless tires and what he sees for them in the future. So have a listen to that clip. Have you ever considered something alternative to uh, air inflated tires? Have you seen some yeah. of these? These alternatives that have uh, essentially spaces in between the yeah. upper wall and the wheel. Have you thought about that? Yeah, we've, we've had, uh, we haven't found a, you know, uh, a tire that, because uh, you, you got to wor worry about road noise. Uh, you got to take out uh, potholes and bumps. Um, you you, you got to have like um, good grip, but you also want to have low rolling resistance so that, you know, you get good range. Those are a lot of things to try to put into one tire. Um, then if you also say, and it can't have air, it's like, this is hard. Uh, so but you're talking, I'm talking to a guy who's putting people on Mars. You can't figure out an yeah. airless tire? It's just, it's, it's an incremental constraint. Mm. Um, so I'm not saying there won't be such a thing. I think there will be, to be precise. Because it seems like we've just gotten way too comfortable with this idea that tires blow out. And you get flats. It's very annoying. Flats are annoying. Yeah, very yeah. annoying. Yeah. Um, in non-sport tires, by the way, are much less likely to go to have flats because they sure just, they have more know, bounce. They yeah. go yeah, like you, let's say yeah. you hit you hit at the edge of a pothole. Mm -hmm. you, if you got more rubber wall, you know you got a longer way to go before yeah. you, you pinch the tire. So, um, 
sport tires tend to that have more flat. So ultimately one day that's a possibility of having some sort of an airless tire. Cause I've seen yes. prototypes. I've never seen one on an actual car in physical in, in real life. Yeah. I think we're, the technology is gradually getting there. Um, and I think for something like a robo taxi where you want to have the tires last for a long time and not go flat, um, it's going to make a lot of sense. So yes, this would be a great technology if we could avoid flat tires, but we might not be there just yet. Update here from Sawyer, Giga Shanghai factory weekly output is now likely between 15 and 16,000 per week. This gives the factory a current 852,000 unit per year run rate. The rumor is the Model Y line produced some Model 3s in October to achieve such a high output. This would be the first time I've heard anything about a Model Y line creating Model 3s. Let me know if you guys have heard of Tesla doing this before, but that would be news to me. Either way, there you have it, some pretty big numbers setting us up for an exciting quarter four. Next up, a user on Reddit asked what this symbol was, and just in case you're not familiar, it's the pedestrian warning system. This symbol means that it is not active. This was a new feature released around September 2019, so if your vehicle was built prior to that, you will not have this feature, but it's basically that subtle noise that the Tesla makes under 20 miles an hour to alert any pedestrians in the area that yes, a Tesla is there and is moving. Next up, I wanna dissect this headline just to help you guys understand this. Tesla is losing US EV market share, but gaining luxury share now outselling Mercedes-Benz. Before I comment, let's go through what they say. Tesla's share of the overall US EV market fell from 79.5% through the second quarter of 2020, down to 66.3% for the same period in 2021. From January to June 2021, EVs represented 2.4% of all new vehicle registrations. And here is that data in bar chart form. But the two important takeaways, one, Tesla's market share being around 80% is clearly unsustainable as other automakers start to sell electric vehicles. So going forward, rather than focusing on the EV market share, it's really not a great indicator for Tesla's strength or market competitiveness moving forward just because they really don't have anywhere to go other than down. The more important and more accurate metric would be Tesla's share of overall registrations, which yes, are still going to be small in the grand scheme of things. However, it will give us a more accurate representation of the true competitiveness of EVs relative to their ICE counterparts. And I'm taking a moment to share this because I guarantee you in the coming months and years, there will be plenty of headlines like this, Tesla losing EV market share. That is not the metric to focus on. We need to focus on the entire sea of vehicles and what percentage of that Tesla has, and then do the same comparison for other automakers EVs compared to the overall ICE space. Next up, in a response to Sawyer, Elon shared this tweet and it really encapsulated why I was so drawn to him many, many years ago. But Elon says, there are many other good causes, but this is my main reason for accumulating capital. The resources I consume personally are very low. So Elon's main drive for making money is his goal to extend the light of consciousness beyond Earth and to make life multiplanetary. But what I saw years ago was that Elon just moves differently. Many other billionaires have yachts and lavish lifestyles and take a lot of trips and do a lot of enjoyment and it becomes public because the paparazzi and all of that. Elon's always been different. And now that he's actually the wealthiest person on the planet, he could back off the accelerator and enjoy some time with friends and take trips and do things, but he's still working a ton of hours to better humanity. This is rare and I can't tell you how rare it is. Moving on, this got overlooked yesterday, but the feds charged the 16th person in the UAW corruption probe following an internal union audit. Prosecutors allege Tim Edmonds, a former financial secretary at UAW Local 412 in Michigan, stole about $2 million. And yes, Elon commented on this, saying that the new UAW slogan, fighting for their right to steal money from workers, we all know where Elon stands. Next up, Japan's Subaru unveils their first all-electric car in partnership with Toyota, so have a look. This will be called the Solterra, and it's the result of a two-year joint development project with its biggest shareholder, Toyota Motor. The Solterra is set to be built by Toyota in Japan, and Subaru might move production to its main market, the United States, if it has sufficient sales volume. The front wheel drive Solterra has a cruising range of 530 kilometers or 329 miles, but we'll see how this proves out in the real world. And just so you guys know, Toyota owns 20% of Subaru 
and has a 5% stake in Mazda. Next up, Rivian is on fire, kind of like I was expecting, honestly. I just think so many people were waiting for the next Tesla, despite how right or wrong they ultimately turn out to be. Up almost 22% today at $122 per share, with a market cap over $100 billion, roughly a tenth of Tesla, and they haven't sold anywhere near a tenth of the vehicles that Tesla has. But if you guys really thought that Rivian's IPO is going to trade on fundamentals, then I would politely argue that you don't really understand what's going in the market at the moment. This is 100% a narrative driven play. As I said, people have serious FOMO about not being in Tesla, so they're looking for the next one and they think, gee, a pure EV automaker in the United States Rivian's going to a trillion dollars in the future, and a lot of those people haven't followed Tesla's journey and they don't know the ins and outs. But who am I to say? Rivian might be an excellent investment over the next 10 years. I'm not saying that it won't be, but at these valuations, I'm not really that interested, especially when I see much better opportunities elsewhere, specifically Cardano, video on Patreon coming soon. But just to be clear, I'm 100% rooting for Rivian. I want them to succeed. I want them to challenge Tesla. It's just at these valuations, I'm not overly interested. And just a little context, GM's market cap was 88 billion this morning and Ford's was 78 billion. Rivian coming in over 100 billion. And last thing for today, Pranay shared these new images of the Starlink terminal. As you can see, it's updated more of a rectangular design. And in case you're wondering what this design is on the router, it's actually the transfer ellipse from Earth to Mars. I thought that was pretty cool. But that's all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. And for those of you wondering about Ashley, she is okay. She had some really bad stomach pains and nausea yesterday early morning. We went to the ER, they admitted her to the hospital, did a bunch of tests. She thought she was going to have to have her gallbladder removed. As of now, she does not need to, but they're doing an endoscopy today to check her stomach to see what's going on. She did stay in the hospital overnight. They're continuing to do tests and to monitor, but she's feeling okay. She's not in much pain and we'll wait to see later today what else she has to do. And this weekend we are actually traveling back home, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to make a video tomorrow or not. Hopefully I'm back home in my normal routine with my normal setup by this coming Monday and we can get back to normal. But thank you guys. Appreciate all the support. I'll talk to you soon.